Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing the various reasons for obeying God, and now that we've gone over all the best reasons for obeying God, it's time to tackle the worst, the reality of the afterlife. We spent the last few episodes discussing some of the kinds of afterlives which we can prove exist, as well as the fact that people can go to each of these places, depending on certain factors. We also talked about those factors, sinful choices. However, in order to understand how this works, we need to know a little more about choices. Human beings have the ability to make three kinds of choices. The first kind is the choice between a good action and a sinful action. In these cases, the sinful action must always be avoided. The second kind of choice is a choice between one evil action and a worse evil action. We covered this briefly in Step 5 of Episode 24, where it was determined that this kind of choice only arises when there is absolutely no chance of avoiding both evil actions. At the time, I used the example of two kinds of stealing, a very poor example in hindsight, since stealing is always voluntary and never unavoidable. Still, the point remains valid, if you must choose between two evil actions and it's utterly impossible to avoid both, you're obligated to pick the lesser evil. Finally, there's the third kind of choice, the choice between two things that are both good. People have a lot of freedom here because they can really pick any good choice they want to. It's praiseworthy to pick the highest and best good out of the various good choices, but it's not an obligation. Christianity teaches that people should choose good actions and avoid evil actions, but just by teaching that you should choose good actions, it's implied that you can choose good actions, and therefore that you have the freedom to make these choices. This takes us back once again to the subject of free will and what precisely it means. First, there are some misconceptions surrounding free will, which I feel it would be a good idea to dispel. Misconception 1. If someone else routes you or predicts your actions, you don't have free will. A free choice is made in the human mind. It's a process that goes on in my thoughts, which begins with some information about the choice I'm making and proceeds through the choice itself until I make my decision. Now, suppose some fortune teller on the other side of the world were reading a crystal ball or something and received a revelation of the decision I was about to make. Just the fact that she knew what decision I was about to make doesn't mean that I wouldn't be making that decision. The process going on in my mind would still be under my control. Even if she used her knowledge of my actions to prevent me from getting what I wanted, the process of my thoughts wouldn't have been changed by that. My decision would still be my own. Therefore, neither being predicted nor being routed takes away free will. Misconception 2. If someone else places you in a certain situation over which you have no control, you don't have free will. An example can disprove this. If I take a rat and place him in a maze, and he goes through that maze, he makes a number of choices which either lead him to arrive at the cheese or to not arrive there. Now, I clearly placed him in a situation which he couldn't just excuse himself from, namely the maze. However, that doesn't mean the rat was unable to make choices. He made several choices, and those choices still had consequences. Misconception 3. If your choices have grave consequences which impact your future ability to make free choices, you don't have free will. Disproving this only requires a little bit of reflection. If you make the choice to walk left, and walking left leads you home, and you make the choice to walk right, and walking right also leads you home in the same amount of time, both of those choices are made freely, and neither one has any substantial consequences. However, suppose one of those paths leads off a clearly visible cliff. Well, if you choose to walk off that cliff, are there consequences to that? Sure. Is it still a free choice? Of course it is. Therefore, the fact that actions have consequences does nothing to harm free will. The remaining questions about free will mainly have to do with the question of whether God predestines people to do certain acts. So, does God predestine people to do anything? No. God can't predestine people to do things because this would imply that God exists before the action takes place in such a way that he can look forward in time to that action to plan it out in advance. However, as we said in episode 12, God is not in time at all, so there is no before for him. Predestining one action over another in this sense is impossible for God. Now, some people say, but that doesn't change anything, because if God knows everything that's going to happen in our future timelessly, then his knowledge of our future actions is timeless, and therefore our future actions themselves are timeless. However, I'm afraid this assumption misses an important distinction. 
It's true that all the properties of God are timeless and necessary, but specific thoughts and pieces of knowledge aren't properties of God, any more than food is a necessary property of the human body, or knowledge of how to read is a necessary property of the human mind. The last objection fails to understand the simplicity of God's thoughts. Remember, in episode 34, we talked about how a mathematical infinity composed of parts is impossible, but that infinities that exist within God are not composed of parts. They merely mean total and complete. God's knowledge is the same way. His knowledge of everything isn't composed of individual thoughts, like James went to the park on Tuesday, or he packed a ham sandwich, like our thoughts are. God only has a single thought, but within that single thought is contained everything that is true and knowable. That single thought is necessary and timeless, but the events to which that single thought refers are not necessary or timeless. Some of them, like our human actions, take place within time and therefore are not predetermined, not even by God. Because of this, we know that people have free will, and free will is not in any way incompatible with God's omnipotence or omniscience. Therefore, since we have the freedom to make our own choices, we should be held accountable for those choices. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.